Oh, I'm sorry. That looks weird, doesn't it? <laughs> this, we're coming after you. So they finished building the wall with a trust for the enemy every minute. How many know it's exhausting having to watch for the enemy while you're working? <laughs> Get the foundation of the temple laid, and I'll help everything under the sun. Enemies of Persia. No. The work stopped for 18 years because the people got discouraged and beaten down in the process of finishing their purpose. And I call the book of Zechariah God's book of telling them to get back to it. And he comes in and he admonishes them. He says, you've, you've gone back to living your own life just like you did before I sent you into captivity. I know I've been preaching a while, but you better be listening. He said, you're acting like you did before I sent you into captivity. Now I've given you a vision to restore and become true again to my heart. But you're more concerned about paneling your own houses than you are about the house of God, which is just a slab. So God uses Haggai and Zechariah to come and spur the people back to building. And the people are right, they're tired. They're worn out. For 18 years, they didn't do anything. River two years. People are tired. I can't do it, but he can. I'm not here because I'm so great. But I've also corrected him. I've had people say, Pastor, you're just one tough dude. You, you, just, you just hang in there. You're just one tough dude. Let me come clean. But I am one wholly dependent upon the Spirit of God to keep me and the vision going. And it seems like the more I quit trying, the better it gets. Because when I'm weak, He's strong. When I'm not trusting in my knowledge, in my wisdom, I got some. I don't care if that sounds ignorant or not. I've been doing this 30 years. I got a little wisdom. I know how to do some of this stuff. I know all the tricks of the trade. The hardest thing for me is to make sure I keep the new wineskin on and don't put the old wineskin back on. Because the old wineskin did not produce what God really wants to happen in His church. What God really wants to happen is... And, and I thank God this morning, and, and, and they were saying, you know, we always need to look back and be thankful. And it took me a while. But, but, I asked, but I'm also honest enough to say, that ain't it. That ain't it. The only thing it fulfills is the Spirit of God loosed in a body. Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit says the Lord. And I said it from day one in this church. First time 15 of us gathered together in a living room. I said this. And I'm, I'm going I'm to stay true to it. I honestly don't know 
what the end result of this is going to look like. I just know what it's not supposed to look like. New wine. New wine skin. I think God's about to do something as radical in the church. And most of the church looked at that and went, <gasps> Mo! Get ready. But because when the Spirit really begins to move in power again, when we don't depend on our wisdom, our know how, when we don't depend upon our degrees, or greatest preachers and men I look up to are some of the most educated, but what I've learned about them is this they've got all that is in, they've just got a PhD. Everything we do. Morning. My assignment from the Lord this morning wasn't to give you ten points this morning. It was simply to refocus us to look to the Holy Spirit to be our source of all success. And if we can't depend upon the Holy Spirit to be that success, shouldn't be. <laughs> we are in the Spirit by virtue of the Holy Spirit in us. We are washed, sanctified, dwelling for God. Revelation comes by the Spirit. I'll give you the Scriptures when I preach. Spirit. Prayer is in the Spirit. Love is in the Spirit. Spirit. Patience is in the Spirit. Endurance is in the Spirit. Or later. If the things keep coming, you're how to endure by the power of the Spirit. We're to be led by the Spirit. At times, <laughs> that's the one you all love. That's, that's the one you're going to be most excited to. Nope. 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 Why? Because I have bound you to the circumstances you're in. That just gives you goosebumps. Everybody's going to go home and put that one. I'll give you the scripture when we preach on it. Hallelujah. Outward acts. So the Spirit. We put the deeds of the flesh. Change this. I got to do that. I quit making New Year's resolutions several years ago. Why? It's one thing to break a law of God. They don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But it's something else to put a self-imposed law on yourself. And don't get through the month of January. So I quit New Year's resolutions. I learned every day is a new day, a new start. We're sons of God by the Spirit. We're to be taught by the Spirit. We're to walk by the Spirit. We're to live by the Spirit. In short, we've been given and empowered by the Holy Spirit to be more than conquerors in life, no matter the situation or circumstances that we find ourselves in. And you want me to come down and do a little dance for you so I can jump up and down and holler and before we go? I will anyway. This is why Romans 8.28 is true. It says, all things work together for good to those that love God and to those that are called according to His purpose. And all that is wrapped in the ministry of the Spirit of God. My friend, listen to me. Listen to me. There is nothing you will face in 2016 that you cannot overcome. There is nothing in the coming year that you can't get through if you will learn how to depend upon the presence of the Holy Spirit. I don't mean talk about Him. I mean come to know Him. I mean come to understand why God gave the Holy Spirit to you. When we, when, when we come to understand that, no matter how horrible the situation may seem, no matter how bad the circumstance may have become, we can go to Romans 8.28 and we can believe that I, whatever is happening here, Devil, whatever you are doing, I am going to come out of this. You know, sometimes it just takes simple people to speak the truth to other people. And there's an old country song that says, if you're going through hell, keep on walking. 
That's exactly what the Lord wants us to understand. If we are facing the gates of hell, and we will face the gates of hell, the promise is that we shall not be overcome. And no matter what happens in the midst of that, God will work it out for His greater glory. That's why Paul goes on in Romans 8 and says that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. In other words, I'm not just, I don't have just a little bit of conquer. Help me, teacher. I got a whole lot of conqueror in me. I don't have just enough for me. I have enough for you. What good is winning if you can't take somebody else with you? And you see, we've become so selfish in these last days. All we want to do is get through the hell with everybody else. And Romans 8.28 says, if you walk in the Spirit, not only will you conquer, but you'll bring others with you and make them conquerors as well.